In this tutorial, I am going to focus on a technique for creating 2D lasers in HitFilm Ultimate using the lightning effect. My name is Axel Wilkinson, but credit for this idea goes to DICE, one of our very clever users who worked out this concept himself and shared it on the HitFilm forums. So, here I have a video clip of me shooting some sort of weapon, to which we will add a laser bolt. Our first step is to convert it to a composite shot. Since I've got a couple of great effects applied to this footage, I'm going to choose Move, and then Convert. As I mentioned, we're going to use the Lightning Generator, which is a HitFilm Ultimate exclusive, to create our laser, so we need a plane to apply it to. Set the color to black, and then in the Layer Properties for the plane, set the Blend Mode to Add. This will remove all of the black, but any bright effects that we add to the plane will still be visible. So, let's open the Generate folder and add a lightning and electricity effect to our plane. Let's find the frame where we want our laser blast to occur. In this clip, it's around 320. And then grab the start point for the lightning and drag it to the end of the barrel. Now we'll grab the end point, and we just want to drag that out so that it follows the natural trajectory created by the gun's barrel on this frame. Now we have a lightning bolt coming out of the gun, but here is the clever bit which DICE suggested. If we go into the lightning and electricity controls and we zero out the wave scale and the twitch scale, we suddenly have a very straight line coming out of our gun barrel. We don't need those branches, so we can use the branch quantity control to remove them. And now we have a nice laser beam coming out of our gun. For security lasers or other beam effects, you could finish off by adjusting the core and glow properties to dial in the appearance. You could change the color, adjust the feather of the effect, and several other properties in these controls. If you are creating a beam effect, you could also increase the twitch scale very slightly, perhaps to like 0.05. And that's an option just to give a little bit more life to the beam and give it a little bit more energetic appearance. Okay, let's find our frame again. I'm going to reset that to zero. Now, since we want to create a bolt, not a solid beam, we need to do a bit more animation. Making the bolt travel from the start point to the end point can be achieved by using the growth controls in the start and end properties. So, with the playhead on the frame where we want the bolt to start, let's drag this plane forward so that it starts at that frame. Now enable keyframing for both of our growth properties. And we can adjust the end growth back until the beam is about the length that we want it to be. Make a note of this length, we're at 0.2, so that we can use it again later on. Set the end width to 1 to eliminate the taper that we see in the effect. Now we need to advance a bit on the timeline the exact amount will be determined by how long the laser effect needs to last, but I'll go two frames forward. And now we want to drag the end growth all the way to 1.0 and adjust the start growth to get an equivalent length to that first frame. So we were at 0.2, so I'll go to 0.8 to get a similar length. And now as we scroll through the timeline, we very quickly have an animated laser bolt, but the effect doesn't disappear after the last frame where it should be visible. So to fix that, we just need to find our last keyframe here on the timeline, make sure we're on that keyframe, then advance one frame more and set the start growth to one. Alternately, you could just at this frame use the razor tool and slice our plane and then delete the remainder of it and you wouldn't have to keyframe that last step. Now, if we play back through our footage, we have a nice laser bolt animated matching up with our gun. If you need the gun to fire more than once, you can very quickly select this layer and duplicate it, and then just adjust the timing and the position of the effect in each instance to create additional laser bolts. You could also keyframe multiple bolts within a single effect, or add multiple lightning effects to the same plane if you prefer to do it that way. I'm going to delete that second one. Now, if you wanted to add some perspective to the effect, this is also possible using the width controls in the start and end properties. 
if we go back to the start of our shot there, here we have both the start width and end width set to 1 to give a nice consistent width to the effect. But if we wanted to make it look more like the bolt was traveling toward the camera, we could adjust the end point. Obviously this doesn't match the angle of the gun, but it should give you an idea of how to use the perspective. So for bolts coming toward us, we would want to start the end width low. How low you want to go depends on how far away in the shot the person actually would be. But you set the start width to a low value and the end width to a high value and you see how we get that taper. Now you'll need to keyframe this end width value over the course of the shot. So here at the start maybe we want it to be somewhere around 1.4 there. We'll enable keyframing and then we can advance to the end of our shot and just make it as wide as it goes. And now as we go through those frames you can see we've created some nice perspective as if the bolt was traveling toward us. You could do the exact opposite if you want to do a bolt traveling into the distance. We'll select our end point and maybe put it way back there, pretend it's shooting back into the distance there. And then if we set the start width high and then keyframe the end width getting progressively lower, you can see that very quickly we can create the illusion of perspective on this 2D effect to make it appear as if its distance from the camera is changing over time. So I think you'll all find this technique works very well and is fairly simple. You can experiment with it a bit to customize your effects. After getting the movement animated, you could perhaps duplicate the lightning and electricity effect and then use different core and glow settings on each copy so that they combine to give a richer, more complex appearance to the effect. You could try adding some flicker to the plane to vary the intensity of the effect over time. Particularly with beam lasers, this could give a good result. And as you try these or other variations on this technique, be sure to share the results with us as we always love to see them. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet to catch other tutorials like this as we release them. So thanks to DICE for the cunning technique and thank you for watching.